Good morning class. Today in this video we will be discussing introduction introduction to bio safety so in the last class we have discussed what is patent what is uh, the indian patent act 1970 and what are the amendments which are done in the patent and as i have already discussed today last day that we will be discussing biosafety so today we will be discussing it the first important point is that why we need to study biosafety we need to study biosafety because when as a as a researcher we are producing various type of genetically modified organism living modified organism and you are releasing it to the environment so as you are releasing it to the environment what is happening is that this particular environment will actually will actually you don't know that when you are releasing it to the environment how it will interact with the environment and basically how it will interact with the components components of the environment that is very very important so you cannot just release this organism into the environment as you wish and you don't know that what will be the ultimate consequences to it so that is why we require to assess the safety of those organisms being released and that is why we are studying biosafety today so uh the next important point is that what is biosafety what is bio safety when i'm talking that what is bio safety bio safety means in broader term is the prevention of prevention it is the prevention of large scale loss large scale loss of biological integrity biological <coughs> integrity integrity focusing on the two important aspects and those aspects are basically your basically your ecology that means implication on ecosystem and human health though we are talking of human health over here but animal health is also very important in this aspect so this is the basic of bio safety so the next important thing is that how will you assess how will you assess the risk so what are the parameters which will determine the bio safety so parameters parameters which will determine your bio safety so accordingly you know that in this first we have to study the risk assessment risk assessment now the question is that when i'm talking of risk assessment it's a big term so we have to divide it first we need to understand what is risk what is risk risk is basically a probability of having a hazard so it is probability probability of having a hazard 
from the release of various genetically modified organism living modified organism or any other organism any any new type of species exotic species into the environment so it is the probability of having the hazard if this is the point then the next question is that what is your hazard what is your hazard now when i am talking of what is your hazard hazard means hazard means the adverse effect adverse effect now when i am talking of this as adverse effect the next point is that if it is an adverse effect it has to be identified it has to be measured so the two other important point is its identification and its measurement its measurement so you have to identify it as well as you have to measure it next important aspect is your what is then risk assessment we have discussed the hazards we have discussed what is risk so what is your risk assessment your risk assessment involves determination of potential and anticipated adverse effects potential and anticipated anticipated adverse effect potential and anticipated adverse effect adverse effect potential and anticipated adverse effect of recombinant dna research so that is your risk assessment and it will also have some other points like hazard identification analysis of the hazard whether it can cause a huge amount of effect consequence analysis what will be the consequence if it is being released into the environment risk determination and risk evaluation you have to evaluate whether that particular risk has can be managed or not so next we will move on to another aspect and that aspect is your risk group now risk group and bio safety levels now this is very very important as a researcher if you go into the laboratory and you don't know the risk group of the microorganism i'm very sorry to say that you will not be able to understand that what type of microorganisms you are handling so so the first important thing the first important thing is your risk group so risk group one what is risk group one risk group one is basically those bio agents which do not bio agents which do not cause disease which do not cause disease so you understand that uh, when they do not cause disease means you can handle it in a very simple manner in a normal table top in a normal table top and the organisms are e coli bacillus subtilis so these are the organisms of your risk group 1 next is your risk group 2 when i am talking of risk group 2 risk group 2 are those organisms which basically cause disease but you have interventions you have interventions you have treatments so it's not a very big factor right you have treatment so these bio agents have can cause disease and you have treatment so risk group 2 basically is handled in bsl2 laboratory which basically have safety cabinets safety cabinets you have to wear a lab coat you have to wear a gloves and then you have to handle those organisms 
लाइक यू नो एस ऑरियस इस साइड से एस ऑरियस ओके नेक्स्ट इज योर रिस्क ग्रुप थ्री रिस्क ग्रुप थ्री आर द पैथोजेड विच कॉज ड्रेडली डिजीज ड्रेडली डिजीज difficult to treat difficult to treat so how will you handle it in a laboratory in this laboratory bsl3 laboratory is required and in bsl3 laboratory it is basically being uh, uh, situated in a uh, isolated from in a separate building it is isolated from the normal community separate building right and also you know that uh, uh, your it has ha it should have a double door entry directly inward air flow additional training all these things has to be there double door entry okay so this is basically your risk group 3 and last but not the least is risk group 4 and in this risk group 4 you know the pathogens which has no treatment no treatment like for now corona virus have no treatment no specific treatment ebola virus once have no specific treatment example arena virus arena virus and you have to use a bsl4 laboratory where you use a hazmat suit this has mat suit will actually cut off the oxygen supply from the environment you will take an oxygen con containment and it will cut off it from the other environment even this laboratory will basically be the entry and exit should have multiple showers vacuum rooms ultraviolet light rooms to kill the germs absolutely from the individual who is working with it so this is all about your the risk groups so student in this class we have studied the what is bio safety what is the importance of bio safety then what is risk assessment and what is hazard and what are the various parameters of risk assessment then what are the different risk groups and your bio safety levels thank you for any question you query in your google classroom